Good morning. This is the Ground Utilities Commission Water Portion Co Authority meeting for June 16, 2021. Uh, this is a hybrid meeting. So the Council Chambers in Zoom. Our future meetings will be live. We're going to be Okay, we are we are going away from Zoom meetings in the future. All our meetings will be live. Uh, call the meeting to order. Roll call. Have Commissioner Zoliani, Commissioner Gowdy, Commissioner Scully, and Commissioner Mathenal, and Chair Edwin. So we are all here. Approval of the minutes. I need a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of May 19th, 2021. Second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Both and carries. Okay. Uh, communications and report. Communications correspondence. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Approval of the treasury report. I need a motion to approve the treasury report for May 2021. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on that? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 So, since the motion carries, thank you, Commissioner Juliani, for catching up with you. I went ahead and next off before you. All right, now, communications for correspondence. Is anything new come in, please? I thought it was the report um, on the retirement board. So the okay, so the let's retirement do that. Board. Sure. Um, we had a meeting last week. I don't have all the figures in front of me, and, and Ronnie, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I believe. Um, we instituted some new calculations uh, for the actual report. So I think we're right around 90% funded. Yeah, was that the June as, of, as of last year, July 1st. If you took a snapshot of today, it would probably be a lot higher than that, I would think. Yeah, I think it would be better. Just the one thing to note with that, it's actually a snapshot as of June 30th. It doesn't take in the, the blending and the amortization like the actual report takes care of. Gatsby report for funding is truly a snapshot June 30. So just the pension funds in the bridge. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Anything else on a communication report? Okay, public communications. I have a uh, an email from Sam Spato, 300 Thing Street. There have been five other days since last UC meeting. There were there were Saturday, 5:22:21 a.m. Saturday 6, 5, 21 a.m., Sunday 6, 6, 21 a.m., Saturday 6, 12, 21 p.m., and Sunday 6, 13, 21 a.m. In each case, the odor was a raw sewage smell. In all cases, the flag over the plant was blowing towards my house, indicating a wind over the plant coming from the southwest. All incidents are reported to either Manager Stevens or Manager Valentin. This is a major increase in the past few months. I believe it is probably due to warmer weather, which is a typical seasonal pattern. I think there, there may actually have been more other days, but this is dependent on the wind direction, so, so they were not noticed. No explanation was given for these events, although both Manager Stevens and Manager Valentin mentioned the waste stream coming from EV and Pfizer running out of Thing Street and others coming up through the holes in the manhole. Cover. This has been a common source of blame, for lack of a better explanation, that I have heard in many times over the past few years. I do not believe that this is the origin of the odors. There are now carbon filters under those covers, and also the holes in the covers are very small. I still believe these odors are coming directly from somewhere in the plant carried in the airstream over the plant. Something is not being done properly, or steps are being skipped in the process. Since these events all happen on the weekends, I'm questioning if the scrubber is not being properly soaked with chlorine tablets before the operators leave for the weekend. This past Saturday, about 5 p.m., I decided to do an experiment. I actually got down and stuck my nose directly over the holes and all three sewer manhole covers on the road in front of the plant. I could not smell anything. However, I could smell a faint odor while standing directly in front of the plant's main gate. This was despite a heavy blowing wind south to north. 
later that evening around 8 45 p.m., the wind shifted and started blowing intermittently from the southwest. The other then came right into my living room through the front windows that faced the plant. I had to shut my front windows and call in a complaint. Unfortunately, by this time, I breathed in enough to cause me respiratory distress for the rest of the night. I would like to say it again that this situation is a health issue for me. Both the mayor and the utility director are possession of a copy of a letter with my pulmonary physician dated 9 5 19. I cannot have odors and toxins from the WPCA wafting through my living room. They are now approaching, we are now approaching a two year anniversary of when the odor problems began in 7 18 19. I am more than unhappy that we're still ongoing issues in the GU. Still has not come up with a solution or can even identify the causes for these problems. I spoke to both Manager Stevens and Manager Valentin about putting a very sensitive air monitor on a pole about 10 feet over the plant. Plant's front fence by the gate, so it's about the same level as my front porch. Maybe this will help pinpoint the exact origin of the odors. I would like to see some action on this proposal. One other thing, I do not ever want to hear again from GU upper management that it is not possible to fully eliminate the odors. Modern well-run waste plant, wastewater plant should be odor-free like this one used to be prior to years ago. Again, I thank you, commissioners, for your help. So that is the public communications. Did we receive any, any more this morning? Okay, so we have sure. no more public communications. Sam seems to know a lot about the operations and the inner workings of the sewer plant. Did he ever work there? No. No, he, did, he was never an employee. He does, he does talk to the employees that are down there. And, right. and you know, sometimes he walks over and talks to those, those guys. Um, there will be a point in our, under the old business where we're talking about the, the other update. And, there are a couple of things we'll talk about there. There, and we'll, we'll, we'll address this then. There's there's also a couple other things that I was notified of yesterday that could be problematic and, and uh, it could be caused in part of this. But we have there's more research we're going to have to do. We will get to that when we get to the the update. Anything else regarding the correspondence? And we'll move on. Regional water update. Uh, Aquatonic Cove interconnection. Ray, I believe that's you. We did uh, receive two bids. Uh, uh, one was, and I don't know exactly, the, we're still looking at the numbers, but it's 1.45 for the low bidder, and the other bidder was 2.4. But we're still looking at references and uh, Probably get back next meeting for approval. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments on that? All right, moving on. Monthly financial highlights. E, we'll turn this over to you. Good morning, everyone. This is E. Uh, I'm going to go uh, review with. Uh, Geo financial for me with everyone. So uh, we're going to start with electric division. First, we start with the revenue. For May, electric revenue of 3.6 million is 1.1% 1 .1 or 41,000 more than the budget and 1.7% more than last May. Um, residential industrial sales for resale all over the budget. Um, the commercial sales are still below the budget and by 8.9% for this month. Fiscal year today, the electric revenue of 45 million is 1.1% 1 .1 or 473,000 more than the budget and 4% uh, uh, more than last fiscal year today. Uh, the same, the residential industrial and sales for resale are all over the budget and commercial is below the budget by 9.8%. Um, for operation and maintenance expense and uh, um, net income, for May is almost 12% below the budget. Net income for the month is 239,000 more than the budget. The favorable variance of net income is driven by the over budget revenue plus the below budget operation maintenance expense. And for fiscal year today, operation maintenance expense are 18% below the budget 
and net income is 2.2 million more than the budget. The favorite variance is driven by the over budget revenue plus the below budget operation and maintenance expense. And, um, so this is the highlight for the uh, financial of electric. One thing I want to mention to the uh, this meeting is the in May, and you received the CIMIC, the uh, equity distribution for the year, calendar year 22, uh, 2020. And which is four hundred eighteen thousand and two hundred twelve dollars, and uh, um, the funds are deposited into the GU Restabilization Funds Hold and CMEC. Any question for Electric Division? Anything on electric? Okay. Hearing none. Moving on. Water. The water side, um, the main water revenue of 869, uh, 896,000 is 2.8% or 25,000 more than the budget and 7.4% more than last May. And industrial and sales for resales over the budget and residential and commercial are below the budget. Oh no, sorry, is on the target with budget. And fiscal year today, the water revenue of 10.6 million is 5.4% or uh, over half a million, which is 539,000 more than the budget and 10.5% uh, more than last fiscal year today. Residential industrial sales are over the budget and commercial sales and sales for resale, resale are below the budget uh, for fiscal year today. And this is the revenue side. Any question for revenue, water? Hey, um, during the course of the year, during the early parts, you don't see much trends. I'm starting to see trends. I thought maybe you could clarify line um, 11 on this report. 12, uh, we have a, basically we're under budget by commercial sales. Mm -hmm. percent, which is, I'm sorry, let me back up. Industrial, 13, line 13, uh, sales. We're basically over budget by uh, half a million dollars. Can you give us an example of what's going on here and why? Uh, yes, and uh, one of our, um, the industrial customers, they have uh, um, higher water usage this year and uh, year to day they have uh, almost 53% uh, more than last year fiscal year's water usage. So that's why cause the industrial sales is over the budget almost by half million. Is this just for this year or is it a trend? Uh, no, it's just this year and they use the, um, the water for flushing and, and that's cause the water usage is high this year. Thank you. And uh, um, keep going with the operation maintenance expense and net income for water division. Operation maintenance expense for May are 10.2% below the budget. And net earnings before grants are 227,000 more than budget. And the favorable variance is driven by the over budget revenue plus the below budget operation maintenance and delay of uh, the DPH, the Kirsten, the agreement project. Fiscal year today, operation maintenance expense are 6.2% below the budget, and net income before grants are 2.4 million more than budget. The favor favorable variance is also driven by the over budget revenue plus the below budget operation maintenance expense and delay of the DPH uh, agreement project. Any question for the operation maintenance expense and net income for water? Again, we have a, we're starting to see a trend on the year to date water figures for page 12, line 25 operating maintenance. It seems like we're under budget by over half a million dollars. Um, this is just the 11th month. Can you tell me what's going on there? Um, this is uh, across the board uh, for the training. And uh, uh, also the um, IT, the, um, the software, hardware, 
maintenance upgrades, they, we budget, but we haven't spent. And uh, also the over budget the insurance the, uh, for the uh, water division. Okay. Anything else on water? And go ahead. Sure, sure, Julia. <laughs> Again, um, that same report from 12 for the year to date water. Line 35, we've got uh, actual discrepancy of about a million dollars there. That's a, that needs an understanding also. Okay, I can explain that. Um, that line item is major as they we um, budgeted for the um, interconnect project, like the, I mentioned, the delay of the DPH Kurson Agreement project. This year we budget 1.2 million, but we have actually just spent 24,000. So that's a major variance came from. So the money we haven't spent, we're going to um, spend next year, most likely. Would I go in the next year's budget? Yes. Got it. And that project is actually a Potomac Gold project. You just heard the way we refer to, I'm thinking of $1.5 million. Okay. Anything else? I'm good. Okay. Anyone else have anything on water? Okay. Thank you. Please move on to Sue. Okay. Um, first, your division, the May sewer revenue of 293,000 is 18.8% .8 or 68,000 the below the budget and 4.2% less than last May. And uh, um, all the division, uh, all the uh, class are below the budget for May. For fiscal year today, the sewer revenue of 4.2 million is 6.8 or 268. 269,000 more than the budget and 7.9 more than last fiscal year today. And residential industry sales uh, over the budget and the commercial are on, on target with budget. Any question with sewer revenue? Uh, sorry to ask the same situation. On report 17, the sewer annual report for the industrial sales for line 12 is up by a quarter million dollars. Can you tell me what that is? Um, okay, the industry, this uh, entry for this, the industry, we have two major uh, customer under the industry sales. And one of the customer we have the um, set up the deduct meter for them. So this year from the uh, June, June 9, 2020 to January 21, um, we um, for the, the their deduct meter issue, we uh, didn't allow them to use the deduct meter. So the water, the sewer, uh, the the usage for binning is higher than normal. But since started with um, the February of this year, we uh, start reusing the uh, restart using the deduct meter for this customer, and the average they deduct about uh, 50 percent of their water usage for sewer binning. So we saw the um, the sewer sales. Uh, if you look at the page 16, you can see that for the current months, the industrial, the uh, the sales actually is 28 percent under the budget. But for fiscal year today, like I said, the first seven months, they uh, didn't deduct any, but since February, they start um, deduct water usage, and we saw the um, the sales for industrials going down. So that's what the major um, reason the cause the variance for industrial sales the variance. So um, on the revenue side, on the water, their usage is greater, but it's also going out on the flushing side. It's greater also for the sewer part. Yeah, sewer is the the is driven by the deduct meter of the industrial customer. Thank you. Right. The, the customer that's doing the flushing is not in the city. So that would have no effect on the sewage. The deduct the sewage is only for customers in the city. So one of the large industrials has a lot of air conditioning. The air conditioning cooling water is deducted because it actually flows to the river, not the sewage plant. So they get a credit off their water usage by that amount. And 
estimating that VDOC meter when de developing the revenues is extremely difficult. Um, and we may not have a dollar or is in that. And it makes very large variances on the store account revenue. Questions or comments? Yeah, if I remember correctly, we had issues with the meters that were bypassed for a while. They were going to get new meters. Did that is that fixed? Is that does that appear to be resolved? That yeah. that is resolved. That's why I believe it was in March. March today they've yep. been deducting accurately. Up till Jan either January or February, we the meter deducts were disallowed because we're not using those systems. And the customer has to um, commit to having their systems accurate and validated. And if they lose accuracy and validation, they lose the deduct to the credit of the SOAR revenue. So they meter their pooling water separately. Mm -hmm. or, yeah. How often do they test their meters? Once a year? Labor? That's actually an Aaron question. Yeah, the, the, this is Aaron. So they are subject to annual uh, testing and validation. Okay. Anything else on sewer revenue? Okay, you're go ahead and uh, continue, please. Okay, uh, the sewer operation maintenance expense and net income uh, for the May, the uh, expense are 21.2% below the budget and net income uh, of 36,000 is on target with budget. In fiscal year today, our operation maintenance expense are 20.4% 20, 20 below the budget and net income is 1, point, uh, is 1 million more than the budget and the favorable variance is driven by the over budget revenue and under budget, the operation maintenance expense. Um, so, any questions? Yep. Yeah. Uh, expenses. Me again, line 17, 817, uh, year to date on sewer, line 22. This month we're showing uh, a, almost a $610,000 uh, less budget in operating maintenance, yet the year to date is going to be over by 300000 Can you tell me what's going on this month? For, I'm actually for 11 months this year. That's six hundred and ten thousand dollars. Okay, that year today figure, and uh, um, the major um, the thing is the uh, from the operation side we have budgeted a professional service for uh, facility the wa uh, wastewater facility planning study for um, the grant application the quarter million. We cause appeal, but we haven't got invoiced yet. And uh, um, this is one thing. And another is just across board, the training, the professional service, and uh, the, um, like the insurance, the, um, the actual cost is, under the, is below the budget. So this is the uh, major reason for the, um, the actual is behind the budget by 610,000 as fiscal year today. So this is grant money not, not used or used? Used, not used, not used. Not, not. We plan to use, we call it PO, but uh, we haven't got the invoice to post to the system yet. So, so we're, the sewer plant is having a sewer study performed and we cut that purchase order maybe three months ago, four months ago. And uh, the intent was to cut that earlier in the year so the project is up and running and it has not spent the majority of the money. So that was put into, that was split back to be included into next year's budget when the majority of the invoices are okay. There is a couple of uh, months of invoicing that is hitting this month or end of the year. Okay. Any other questions on the sewer? All right, here we we'll move on. Thank you, Lee. Oh, thank you. Projects and initiatives update. The first one is customer service accounts receivable. Tina? Can everybody hear me okay? Yep. Yeah. 
Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, actually, our AR looks uh, really well. Um, we are sitting at right about 4.5% um, AR uh, for the month of May, um, which is really good. We're actually roughly about a percentage lower than we were um, last year at this time. Um, I think it has to do with a couple of different things. Obviously, um, the states is actually opening back up and so we're able to uh, do a little bit of, a, of additional and more aggressive collections on some of the delinquent customers. Also, uh, one of the things that we instituted this year is we um, actually start emailing customers um, twice before they're actually shut off for non-payment, giving them the opportunity to be able to pay before um, or two additional notices before they're actually shut off for non-payment, um, which I think has made a huge um, improvement. And then anybody that we don't have an email for, um, we're actually calling them um, once and trying to get an email and explaining to them that um, this will be their one and only time if they want additional notification, we need to have their email addresses to be able to send them an email. Um, the only other thing uh, that's going on right now in customer service that um, we are uh, starting to um, email all the customers for Groton Utilities and Basra um, with a auto pay brochure, trying to get more customers uh, signed up for auto pay. So uh, we're gonna kind of split it out a little bit and send um, like 500 emails at a shot so we don't get it inundated with customers if they need assistance. Um, getting themselves set up on auto pay. Um, besides that, everything else is going quite well in customer service right now. Any questions or comments on customer service? Right. Thank you, team. You're welcome. Uh, water filtration plant project commissioning update. Who is that? Right. Uh, project is moving along. It's we're not moving with great speed, but uh, we're moving. We haven't completed every task, but we have all the building, as you see in the pictures. Uh, every room is almost done, but not completed. A big move is trying to get the manganese contactors up and running. Uh, right now, most of the pipe downstairs in Unit 3 uh, basement is in it's not tightened or anything but we got it in the building and they're trying to get all that in and then they'll have to start putting all the uh filter tiles in each basin and connect that and then we have to do testing of the manganese uh absorbers which will take us approximately three weeks after during the conditioning process which has not been uh approved by the town, the state, or the yet. Uh, we're working with each agency right now. Uh, Scantech and R.H. White have to do some uh, testing to try to get it to see what the discharge will be because we're gonna put some of this in our lagoons. And uh, so we're working on that right now. So that's our, our biggest part. Everything else today, they're paving the roads. So we might have a road that's paved instead of uh, bumps all over the place. We are working on tiling the floors and uh, the abaters just moved in to start the last part of unit three upstairs uh, to get that going. So we're getting there. Our biggest part will be the uh, manganese contactors, which we would like to have them sooner, but uh, our manganese has been low in the reservoir right now. So hopefully that continues on and along with hydro flushing that helps that we keep moving a lot of water. Uh, so. That's, that's what we got. We'll probably, we should have been done by the end of uh, May was our contract extension. And we're looking at another extension. I'm going to just say the September, the September. Uh, okay, so originally the original turnover date was supposed to be September of last year. Then it got extended, then it got extended again to May. Now it's been extended to September. So that's the current status. And what's the delay now is the manganese contractors and then uh, the actual operation and certification of the plant. Is that, that's what's 
that, that's the that, that the certification would be the magnetic contactors and then running the complete plant at one time right with the magnetic contactors involved yes and when we got everything resolved with the uh, granulated activated charcoal so those beds are done there we tested those the daf there were some issues with the uh I don't know if they're called, they're, I don't know if they're called fans or screens. 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 So we have them in, so we haven't had any problems. We have them at the intake of the plant. Well, the, no, I was talking about screens. screens. I would, oh, the, the scrapers. So yes. yeah, yeah, whatever the proper term is for the, inside the plant. I'm not talking right. about okay. the uplift. The scrapers are the sweeps, either right. one. Uh, we we had, had issues with that? We had, they used to be run. Uh, on an angle, they right. wouldn't line up. Those have been lined up, uh, and then the back plant has been running uh, very good. Okay. Uh, we, we, especially with hydrogen flushing, we put it up to over 12 million gallons uh, rate. So it's it's on that part. We do have a couple of pumps that we have to do testing. So the back plant is operational. Magnesium contact is which we need now uh, for offline, and that will complete. Most of the operation we have like rooms to complete and stuff. But are there, are there any other outstanding mechanical issues that could cause additional delays or challenges with turning the plant over to us? Uh, we do have uh, one of the bigger pumps downstairs that has to be tested. I hope to try to start that tomorrow. The testing, if that runs well, uh, that would be another hurdle that we don't would be good. Uh, checked off the list. Uh, the other parts are basically the outside. The, the operation wise, we should be in good shape. Skin wise, we don't have the outside sheeting going on. Uh, the windows, there were mistakes on the windows. We're waiting for new windows to come in. So we have office furniture in the building against plywood with no windows on it. And the windows have to come out and they that office furniture. It's, can, you, can you explain the issue with the windows? This was explained to me yesterday. Okay. We have an issue with the windows. Uh... Yes, the window. So when the uh, contractor, which is uh, doing the sheeting on the, on the building, uh, took the windows, it, set up, it says in the plans to measure the windows in the field. He took them and measured them by the plan. The windows themselves say, 12 to 16 weeks to get. They all got delivered the wrong size. So then he went, had, they were tinted at the same time. So you can't go and replace them. So we had to go remeasure, start all over again. We have a load of windows that are no good at the plant, and we have a load that's coming almost completed, new ones. We should not be penalized for that. Area. No, 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 no. That's, that's the builders. So what the builders did was instead of following the thing and then measuring the spec, they measured the plan and the spec and the uh, in, the insulation is a little bit off from the plan, so the windows don't fit. So now if you go over there, we got plywood everywhere. We got to get this fixed. But these are all things that are contributing to the delay. Now. I had this conversation with the director yesterday because this was important to me. The the guarantee period, because I thought that different things were turned over, and we, we would end up having staggered uh, guarantee periods. So we'll get a guarantee period of a year, but that'll come from the whole plant once it's commissioned. Is that correct, or am I off on that? Right? Uh, no, the uh, equipment has been running. That guarantee period is going to start when that equipment was uh, in service. So we are going to have a staggered guarantee period. Yeah. yeah. I was told that the only thing that I thought we turned over was the generators. The only thing that we turned over really was Bailey Hill uh, mixing system. The generators haven't been turned over because they're still weak. So when does the so the only thing is the mixing system, right. the rest of the plant but they're going to say right. that the DAP they're trying to throw the DAP part that's been running since uh what four or five months. That's going to start on that time because we've taken it over. That guarantee period will be up in a year. The high lift pump started earlier. I don't know all the dates off my head. So 
have the pump guarantee cited because uh, as we go to manufacturers, we just had uh, some analyzers uh, not work and the guarantee period because they've been sitting there not operating as the company saying it's off. We're going back to white and saying you have to fix it. So we're working on these issues right now. I think we should push back. This is my opinion. I'll, I'll bounce it off the, the commission, but it doesn't make sense for the DAF guarantee period to already be inspected. We have in force when we had problems that should be done once it's we start the guarantee period once it's all fixed. Mm -hmm. I'm basing my experience based on delivery of infrastructure submarines and those kind of things. So <clears throat> the guarantee period starts, but if they haven't even fixed everything, then that's it makes sense that once it's done and it's fully operational, then the guarantee period starts. Right. Yes. So <clears throat> I think we should probably push back on the DAF and we should probably put push back on the uh, Boa pump station because we're still not there as far as installation of screens and stuff like that. So I'm not sure how they can hand that over to us and say, hey, it's yours if we haven't even resolved that issue mm -hmm. yet, right? right. It, it's been a conversation that we're trying to work through right now, okay. but, and, and just the part of the conversation, okay, the gas plant was accepted, was on, had been running for a, Three months, it's been a little longer, but so we're running for three months. They're saying everything that's been there, and we have a list of anything that has happened, has been running. So, say the year started a couple months ago, not it won't start because the magnets contractors won't be on maybe until September. You won't get a whole plant one year guarantee period uh, for that whole plant like that. They're not going to put a blanket over that whole item, but. And we're working on it. It's part okay. of the uh, major construction part is if you get a pump and it's been running for a year and now the Magnus contactor goes on because our high lifts have been running for a long time. Right. That would be almost a year and a half, two years that pump supply is, is going to guarantee, won't guarantee that for that amount of time. All right. Well, you're going to need to make sure we keep this body informed of any issues yep. we have. Yeah. Yeah, we have a whole spreadsheet that items okay. that we go through. Yeah, G G the stance will be a delay warning to start there as long as possible on both equipment. Uh, because there's two separate things. The manufacturer's warranty is very different than RH White's implied warranty from their turnover to us. Exactly. It's, it's, we will so, press so, you, hard. so you got an OAM issue, which is the original for the manufacturer, and then you have a contractor. Uh, build of the facility and the facility as a whole certification of that facility. Okay. Um, also, because of the delays, the official delay period, as uh, Ray mentioned, is the end of May. Uh, technically, RH White is in default on the contract right now, and there's liquid reparation, uh, uh, liquid damages. Uh, that are on the order of magnitude of thirty-seven hundred dollars a day for every day of delay. Additionally, uh, Stantex uh, extension—they had a non-cost extension that we approved that went to the end of May. So Stantex has asked for uh, an extension, and then they said we'd like to have an extra fifty thousand dollars to bill against. Um, and we pushed back. I pushed back on them and said, "Listen, we'll give you a no cost." Uh, extension, and then you have to, you're supposed to be managing the contractor. And at this point, we would, uh, the liquid damages would be to pay you and to pay any other additional costs of the project running over. Um, so there will, there is negotiations and there will be negotiations ongoing uh, to try to resolve this. Because of course, RH White's going to come on and say, oh, we really need an official extension that allows us time to do this. And it may or may not cost money, but they're going to look for that to, uh, in order to not pay liquid damages. And of course, our stance is if the project's taking longer, we have additional costs. Look at the engineers even looking for extra money. Um, right now, that's all being worked in the background. If you look at the, um, the contingency sheet that Ray provides us every month, it indicates that there's about a half a million dollars left in contingency. 
uh, with um, a few a myriad of other change orders working in pluses and minuses. Um, we believe we're okay with total project budget, but as the project closes and all these things negotiate to an end, they're all going to, it, it'll be very interesting to watch. It's not a little stress negotiation. Okay. Any comments or questions from the commission? Okay, we'll move on. Project update, electric boat. Morning, Randall Sukunak, Pratt Utilities Electrical Division. Um, so as of today, they are completing uh, all the support brackets, et cetera, for the uh, Hendrix messenger insulation where I start to pull wire model. That's my understanding. I would say. So just as a note, yeah. this is the first time we've had a you know major contract. This is an outsourced contract to run the Hendrix wire to EV. So uh, this is BHI. Uh, they came on site on the seventh and it's been successful so far. Just want to make sure we highlight that. Right. They came in on, on site the seventh. They did their uh, safety briefing with Pratt Utilities safety consultants. Uh, they did their prep work and, and got materials, et cetera, for the, for the ASL. Um, and then Friday there was a no work day, and then we had we had an outage in the morning and some weather, so we pulled them out of the air on Monday. So they're, they're about day six or seven right now, which is good. And I think they quoted us a 23 day work period. So we want any questions on our book? Okay, transmission. Uh, again, Randall Superna. Uh, transmission. So we have a walk down today one more time with uh, Lagos, who's the engineering firm. There were some questions risen uh, last week on uh, Friday. We did a walk down with the engineering firm, or actually, we did a, a construction company, environmental, um, PHI, as our uh, consultant for project oversight. Um, there are some concerns about the, the grading, et cetera. So uh, Blue Rock was there. They're going to grade. A level for the Eversource for the for the BHI or sorry archives to do their construction. There was some confusion, I believe, with Lyos the engineering firm. So we're gonna revisit that today. Um if all goes well today, we'll have um our stormwater plan both revisions will be able to be completed for submission to uh, Connecticut DEP. It takes about 60 days for approval. Uh the storm uh self verification forms I believe was signed by Mr. Ron Gay today and sent to uh DHB, so that one, uh, that's a 30 day wait period for the Army Corps of Engineers. And we're hoping to start in September. Uh, veg management, we may do some maintenance veg, which would be ground clearing, which as long as we don't disturb the soil, we'll do that. So we may start that in July. And then I'll start to move the climate forward for the period of time. Questions on transmission? So Blue Rock will be in September. Blue Rock um, vegetation, there's two divisions in the uh, vegetation division. They'll probably start the ground clearing maybe in July, July, August, and then September would start the uh, padding and the matting. And then maybe a two week period after that, we'd start the drilling with uh, R. So probably September. But the ground clearing, we're trying to do that ahead of time. We've got uh, uh, Burns and Tom is uh, our consultant for the uh, environmental management and BHV. We're consulting with them now to make sure there's no. Um, Prior to carry supper or, or any concerns with the, with the environmental disturbances. Anything else on transmission? Okay, that's it. All right, thank you. The only other part I need to talk about is uh, Buddington terminal upgrade. So, 400 uh, terminal line terminal. The 400 line will become the 1911 line because the uh, 115 line is going to afford upward designation. Uh, we have uh, joint calls with Eversource. Uh, we have three right now. One is overall construction, all the projects. One is transmission only alliance, and one is now the protection controls and communications. So there's upgrades to relays, communications, fiber, rate trap, all that stuff. Um, so we've been on quite a few calls lately with them just to help coordinate between projects. Um, and we have engineering starting. It was approved last uh, city council meeting. So BHI is uh, starting on the engineering for electrical uh, protection controls and the structures. Good. Anything else? All right. Thank you, Randy. Wastewater treatment facility roofs. 
the roofs, uh, we, it was supposed to be bed to, bed to go back uh, June 3rd, but we had to cancel the beds because of the rubber, the glue, we cannot get for at least six to eight months. Uh, because of the pandemic, the factory is overwhelmed and there's only one in the United States and the other one is in Japan, so, uh, or China. So it, they have none left. Uh, Firestone is a rubber roofing company. And when we went out to bid, we had a pre-bid meeting and none of the contractors could get an actual price uh, because they don't know what it's gonna be by the eight month period. So we're gonna wait. Uh, Firestone will let us know when everything calms down and we'll have to go back out to bid. And this just isn't for Firestone roofs, it's for all the roofs. Uh, the glue is just, I guess the factory shut down and slowed down and now there's a big uptick in that. What's the downside risk for, for the delay of eight, eight months? I mean, uh, are, are we actively leaking now? Yeah, we, we've had some, we have spots that are leaking. Uh, can can we do we cold patching we now and then we'll sell later? We can try to get a patch. It's hard on a rubber roof. We tried. We ran and, and tried to find out where they go. So we've taken some tiles off and put you know preventive me measures up so right. it doesn't slip. You don't deny an active puddle that hits the floor or not. Well, and that's the problem when you when you have a leak. You know where the leak starts and where the leak shows inside right. are often feet apart because of following the path of least resistance and going down. I beams and then you know, dropping things like that. Uh, and I agree with you, patch a rubber, rubber roof is problematic. I had trouble the last, uh, the last company I have in the building we had that had leaks. And uh, cold patches don't always help, or they do help, they help for a short period of time. But I thought if there were something we could do here, maybe uh, as an interim, since we're having to wait eight months, you might want to take a look at it for me. Excuse me. Is it is this the you know, it's the leak that's now there is, is it minor in nature or or is this could this be Sam's issue? Oh these are, these are in the building. So we have one in the digest uh the thickener building that you there's no odor in it in the building. So oh. now this is, has nothing to do with Sam's okay. Okay. issue. All right. All right. AWIA update. Rick. Yes, uh, this is Rick Stevens. Um, uh, the update of the AWIA is that we have completed all of the required sheets to complete the risk and resiliency plan and given them all that information to the SLR. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the name of the consultant. I think we were just awaiting a couple financial forms that uh, finance had to uh, get the information to finalize. I think they were looking for fiscal year end information. Uh, other than that, um, Sue uh, in IT completed all the uh, cybersecurity information that they requested as well. So um, SLR has said we will be on schedule to complete that first portion of the AWIA requirements. The second part, the emergency response plan, we are updating in-house, then that has to be shared with SLR. They will verify that we used all the correct EPA language and they will certify it and send a certification letter. That has to be sent by 1231, uh, 21, <clears throat> and we're on uh, target for that as well. So. The project is going well, and we're going to be regulatory compliant. Okay. Any questions on this side? All right. Thank you, Rick. All business, uh, wastewater treatment. Can, can I just try to kind of do a combination of more back to the monthly financials? I'm just looking for a consensus from the board. Instead of doing the June financials for the July meeting, to hold off and wait until the August meeting. To allow for more AP close to give a truer picture of the June year end numbers and then skip the July financials in that year month just to do the June ones, and then we'll start with the August financials going forward. Just if, if the board's okay with that. 
just to give you a true picture of June instead of having it show where there's still AP coming in for year end. Because we're gonna have to close that. Right. Just looking for consensus if that's okay with the board instead of doing that June when we're gonna really close. As long as the level record is correct what you do. Right. For that for those invoices that are coming through in July. Okay, what's the well of the board? Looks for the commission around. It's easier on that. And then we'll skip, okay? we'll skip the July one just be, so we're not doubling up doing two reports for that one. Commissioner Mathenau, are you okay with that? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. Then that's what we're going to try. Go ahead and do that. Uh, thank you. Okay. Um, there, there's a discussion internal with staff. Uh, you may find one of the action items is tentative today. Um, we may ask for a special meeting next week if that comes. or maybe in the July meeting, but we're hoping to do that item uh, sooner than later to make the next committee the whole meeting. There's discussions internal that there may not be any action items in July. So the chair may may have the option, we have done this in the past, to skip the July meeting. Um, so there are discussions in the background about that, just so you heard. But if we if we do if, if we don't have action items, then I may cancel the meeting. But that doesn't mean that you won't get your report. You'll get your end of year June report at the next meeting, whatever the next meeting. Okay. Uh, we're all right. Wastewater treatment facility odor update. So uh, I just met with uh, Joe Pratt this morning, Ray. Right? So if, if there's something else. Uh, so we uh, we have had some uh, about five uh, hydrogen sulfide spikes. Joe, the chief plant operator, believes it correlates with uh, some additional uh, construction activity and some additional submarines at EB. Uh, we continue to work with uh, EB. Joe is actually getting uh, clearance to uh, have access to EB so that he can work. Uh, hand in hand with the, the contact we have over here. Because we believe that there is uh, some of the odor problem uh, that comes down Thames Street uh, that's caused by the way EV is flushing and holding their tanks, plus the additional uh, submarine activity and construction activity. So we do believe that is a problem. Um, and uh, as soon as Joe gets his clearance, which should be next week, uh, he'll be meeting with that individual to try and improve the process over there to help us uh, mitigate any odor wafting down things from that direction. So the other thing uh, was there, uh, Wright Pierce, right, is our um, master service uh, agreement holder, and they are doing the study at the wastewater treatment plant. So yesterday they had a four-hour meeting looking at part of the process down there with plant personnel. Uh, the odor expert was there, and uh, he is recommending it. It's uh, ironic that Sam uh, uh, thought about uh, having a, a meter on his on his deck because we may be talking to him about that. Because the odor expert is recommending that we look at um, uh, some various elevations, including at Sam's deck level or quartz level on uh, on his house. And hopefully uh, we can uh, come to some kind of agreement to do that. It's interesting. There is an odor from Mercaptan, which we don't measure. None of our meters measure Mercaptan. Uh, apparently, the odor expert says that it's part of the normal degradation of the sludge uh, material and sewage uh, that uh, we could be getting Mercaptan, which we aren't measuring. We didn't know about the captain. So he's suggesting that uh, we uh, actually, Wright Pierce is going to, as part of the evaluation of the water treatment plant, is going to take some of captain uh, measurements for us uh, with some different instrumentation. So uh, there may be something else there that we weren't aware of. Um, it could be a byproduct of the, the sewage uh, kind of stewing. Yeah, well, we still got to, we, we still have to find the cause and uh, mitigate, mitigate that. I would think that the, the Mercaptan production would be 
and I'm going to do some research on the captain. I'm not familiar with that, but it makes sense to me that it would be produced at the same rate the hydrogen sulfide would be produced, right? I, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to figure it out. I mean, we'll have to look at the chemistry. This is a new term for me. We'll look it up. Well, the, the point is that again, GU is trying to be proactive and you know turn over every uh, every stone to try and find where this other issue is coming from. I, I will say the plant is being operated in accordance with its operations manuals. All things are on schedule for their uh, their maintenance, cleaning, and preventive maintenance, and the scrubber tabs are being added uh, on a on a on a schedule. And there's enough chlorine in the scrubbers, uh, as validated by the lack of um, uh, hydrogen sulfide readings on the on the stack monitor, right? So uh, Joe, or the chief plant operator, does put enough uh, chlorine in that scrubber to make sure that it lasts through the weekend. So I uh, just want to make a statement. We are operating that plant in accordance with the procedures and the requirements. Um, that's all I have on that issue. Ray, did I miss anything? One thing on the weekends, we do have crews go down there in the morning and do their rounds, yeah. and they check the scrubber to make sure there's uh, tablets in there still. So it's not just the whole weekend. They do check that. Well, let me let me address the submarine thing that, that could be an issue here. Is that the way that, that submarines typically handle their uh, their biological waste is they have a sanitary tank. And then once that tank gets to a certain level, then they'll either pump it or blow it depending on what class submarine they are. And they don't tend to dewater that tank every day. So they allow it to build up. And so therefore the breakdown of the, of the sewage in that tank Builds and that could build hydrogen sulfide. That that is that is true. The thing that we need to try to figure out is is that part of the cause? And if so, we'll have to go to an electric boat and then maybe work with soup ship or something else to get the Navy to change their policies on the collection of waste. Because uh, I don't I don't know that they blow. Uh, blow or pump sand sanitaries every day. And so it, it will, we will need to see if there's a correlation and a causal effect of sanitary tank collection and the, the getting rid of, the, of that waste if that correlates to any of these, any of these spikes. Uh, not trying to put the blame on somebody else, but trying to truly look for the cause of this and then uh, stop the cause of this. Anything else on the wastewater other update? Treatment plan over there. Any Tri Town Trail? Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a question still on the wastewater and in the order. Mr. Bathno, you have the floor. Can you hear me? Yes, you have the floor. Okay. Thank you. So I was wondering whether I was reading again Mr. Spano's uh, letter. Is it possible to trace back what changed two years ago? Because two years ago there wasn't any issue, and since then we have this problem. What changed since then? May be at EB or maybe at the Navy. Is it because they have now increased in production or what? What that may be, if that could be something helpful to find out what what changed. Just that. Thank you. Moving on, Tritown Trail. Um, we had a pretty good in-depth update last month, and the next meeting will try Town Trail Association is next week. Mm -hmm. 
anything else on the road business? Yeah, just a couple of questions. Um, Main Street, traffic lights. School Street? Main Street, traffic lights. You're talking to down at school? Two intersections left to do. Yeah, front right. Yep. Two. Yeah, it's been almost two years. Have you taken delivery of uh, this number? Uh, a lot of in, a lot of No. It hasn't been a long time. We have two new ones on order, I right. believe. Right. And delivery no. is. We haven't taken delivery yet. Oh, they must be way over there. At least one of them. Yes. I think we awarded one last year. One last year, one year before. I think there's an 18, typically 18 buck delivery time. Is that what I was told? I think. Yeah, it's usually the small ones were, were a short period. It's usually it's 16, 16, 16 months, something like that. We'll check that. Yeah. But I do know a lot of things are delayed due to COVID. So True. Delay, it could be due to COVID. They could be missing check. Yeah. 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 We, we, we did the uh, light to heavy trucks. And we canceled the bid due to delivery time being like a year. So they, they no one would no one would no one has them. No one would bid. So right. we we canceled the bid and we're gonna go out again later at some point. Washington, Washington Park LEDs uh, lights to the field, that hasn't been done yet. That the market was done. That, uh, that, that, not much, but no, the PO's been issued now. They were located to the company, and we're looking for water and the lights right now. Okay, so it has it. It's in the front system. You're talking about for the ball fields? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I, and I talked to Randy before the meeting about the Osprey Nest. I know one of my counselors is uh, following that and very concerned about that. So when we relocate that Osprey Nest, I need to make sure I know so I can back out. Uh, we have done that in the past on jobs that we do. We routinely do that. So uh, that's probably Well, we'll have to see. I mean, our our agreement was that we're not looking to destroy or disturb that nest. We're going to relocate it and replace the lights, and then we'll put up something on the lights to discourage future nesting on that. Well, they leave the end of September. Right. And I said the timing will work. Yeah. I said because then you could just take it out. Right. Where's the end? It's actually on top of the lights. Well, where? Where do we have it? Uh, the ball field. In what the field? field? Yeah. Field one. I think it's field one. Right? I don't know what the field the number the big, the big field. The 90. Those are 90 foot poles. Yeah. So yeah, they're eating each other. So like I said, it sounds like we're probably going out. So hopefully the lights are delayed to the point where it just works out perfect. We just delay that one pole. <laughs> Anything else in our old business? All right, new business. Rules and regulations. Tina, do you want to do this one? Yes, sorry. <laughs> I've got multiple mutes going on. So um, there's absolutely uh, no changes to the rules and regulations this year as of right now. Um, so um, they were the same rules and regulations that were approved uh, last year. Um, just so that the uh, commission is aware um, is I will be going through um, and looking at the rules and regulations. Um, we have a couple of concerns um that have been brought up to customers in regards to smart metering and smart metering uh, being attached to their house and i just want to ensure that our rules and regulations covers our responsibility and covers the fact that um, gu is um, responsible um, for the smart meter and we choose a meter that is actually installed in a customer's house so um but that will that will probably be in the next month or so. And if I need to take bring it back um, to the commission to get it um, approved, um, I will at that time. Okay. Anything else on the board? 
Moving on, action items. I need a motion to approve the GUC WPCA 21-06-25. Consideration of the National Authorized Run Utilities Management to issue a purchase, see the purchase order, I think, to BHI Energy, DD Power, 40 Sequin Drive, Glastonbury, Connecticut, for the amount not to exceed $173,200. $75 from 30 cents, including a 10% contingency for the removal or replacement of old damaged wire as part of the express fee that ties to every point and to be paid from the 20 FY 2022 electric non bonded capital budget. And furthermore, the city council be apprised of this action for the recommendations that it concur. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Please. Speak to this. Good afternoon, uh, so we're going to have BHI. We'd like to have BHI do this because of the asbestos uh, contained in the conduit and the we believe it's in the cement as well. So we, we ran across it before. BHI will be in charge of remediating any asbestos. Contamination or, or particles, etc., and you know, properly break down the cable and dispose of it as necessary. Um, it's about a thousand to so fifteen hundred foot run uh, on the riser pole um, on the east side of Thomas Road, past the bridge, through the bridge to the other side. So, scale before. So, this is, this is the break on Thomas Road. I want to make sure the counselors understood where this was. The other time. No, no, but uh, I think they've given us a, a week period. Right. right. So we're looking probably August, September. It might be the same crew that are working on the east line. Yeah. They have They have underground. They have underground. Okay. Okay. All right. So <clears> oh <throat> one and a half is on the Shattercasa Road. I believe so. Yeah. And you're going back one, two, three, four manholes. I believe so. What? So we believe that they found the damage in a failed level. splice. That's a failed splice, correct. Right. And putting handles. Correct. So we're going to do all three conductors and bring in new. These pulling out, I think, four so. sections of wire. I think so. Yeah. Yes. And then splicing. Mm -hmm. They're re-splicing. Yeah, the fear is that that cable's been sitting there and soaking up water for. Quite a while. Yeah, and probably were you. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't think Phil and you were still here. No, 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 Phil and you. Okay. Oh, it just strikes me funny that you're, you're placing all that wire. I could see one section so you have slack to the two splices. Right. We don't know if there's enough wire either to, to just splice in place. Like, so we want to make sure there's enough wire. Obviously, that's what I mean, right? If we place one, so we get two right. rails. Right. What the engineers recommend? You don't, offhand, you don't know what hand holds it, you two, two, six. I don't know if it's the one right past the bridge or the next one down. I think we're trying to eliminate as much of water in the hole as possible for the splicing. I think we can't pump the over. It's good to do it at low time. <laughs> really, if it's in it, it's all time. That's all right at the top. That's true because that is time. Yeah, correct. Yep, it was. So we're going to see you in the US while it's scheduled to timeline. It's going to be low time. It's not a fun job. Yeah, they're going to be in there for random times. And I think 308 runs through there as well. Yes. Switching and out, etc. Yes. All right, so here we're placing four sections up, up the hill to a full one and a half. Correct. Right. Right. So we're going to try and split, send it right through, where I think there's probably multiple place points now. We're going to try and eliminate those place points. And then we're going to have to pull. They probably do that. Probably have this at bridge. Crash was which we did bridge. last time. On bridge. Huh? Yeah, we had. That's what we did last time. And we did pick it up and we do all the contacts. Yes. So we're hopeful. 
Yeah, you could pull like digital solids. Mm -hmm. That's what BHI engineering recommends as well. Anything else on this? Right. I'm trying to remember that's the way we did it. The railway line we did not do it. That was all pieces that were spliced in every hole. Okay. 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 Harry Mudd, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carried. Any votes for GC, WPCA 21, 06, 26. Consideration of an action authorized grant utilities management to issue a purchase order to Woodward and Curran, 35 Broad Street, 1 Bossett Hill, 47, Providence, Rhode Island, for amount not to exceed $17,700 in the cents to replace four obsolete program logic controllers for scale, that's scale control run, located within four grunt utilities ledger locations to be paid from the water available cash as a non-bonded capital expense. And furthermore, city council be apprised this action with the recommendation that they concur. So moved. We have a motion and a second discussion. Rick, you going to speak to this one? Oh, sure, Mark. I could speak to this one. <clears throat> so, Mayor and Commissioners, as you know, you previously approved us upgrading our radio communication to support our SCADA systems. Um, originally, Wood and Curran thought that these serial operated PLCs, program logic controllers in four locations, could uh, work in the system because they've done several other hybrid systems, hybrid being able to communicate serially and through ethernet. However, um, they found in doing this through the engineering that because we have the repeaters as well, three repeaters in the system, that the service with the PLCs, although it may work, is not reliable. So we're recommending that we now replace these PLCs with uh, Ethernet capability PLCs. And that's what this amount is for. Questions from that? So this is the communication part of the unit? The, the program logic controller is, is exactly that. And it can communicate in different ways. These ones, older ones, happen to communicate serially, whereas the Ethernet is more a back and forth communication. And um, they thought they could run a hybrid system and they've done it several times, but they found out when they got into the nuts and bolts that they couldn't because of the three repeaters. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, extension motion carries. Next item, a new motion for GUC WPCA 21 day series 6 test 27, consideration of an action authorized running utilities management to issue a purchase order to AIS Corporation 802 Boston Cross Road, Boston Post Road, West Haven, Connecticut for an amount not to exceed $189,754.20, including a 10% contingency for phase two, completion of the Probably coordinated by federal PCB remediation of the water treatment plant as required by EPA to be paid from the fiscal year 2020 water non bonded capital budget. And furthermore, the city council be apprised of this action for the recommendation of the new concur. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? You going to talk about PCB removal? This is uh, uh, to complete the PCB remediation in the, in the old water treatment plant. This is phase two. It's in, it's in the FR22 budget, right. and it is the last phase. That this should be complete. Complete, complete the PCB remediation. remediation. Okay. okay, hopefully. And this goes with the next action. Oh, okay. I was going to kind of find it. Why does it take it off once it's put it on? Hopefully not put the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstention, motion carries. 
Next item, GUC WPCA 21 06 28. Consideration of an action authorized by utilities and management to issue a purchase order to Celtic Painting LLC 189 Co Road, Thompson, Connecticut for an amount not to exceed $112,000. $755.94 with a 10% contingency for phase two painting of the water treatment plant. Various rooms, stairways, and containment areas be paid from the fiscal year 2022 water non bonded capital budget. And furthermore, the city council be apprised of this action and the recommendation of any concur. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? This goes very long. Uh, the prior, the prior actually removes the paint and scarifies and preps the surface, and then this is the new paint that goes on. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Extension motion carried. GUC WPCA twenty one as zero six as twenty nine. Consideration of an action to authorize county utilities management. To provisionally approve change order number 21 from RH White Construction Company, Incorporated, 21 Central Street, Auburn, Massachusetts, which includes a credit and revisions to the existing plan as part of the State of Connecticut Drinking Water State Revolving Fund, DWSRF, project number 2013 S0140, pending final approval by the State of Connecticut Department of Public Health for an amount not to exceed 39000 $39,494.32. And furthermore, the City Council be applied to this action. Recommendation to concur, and Mayor Keith Henry be authorized to execute the change order 21 upon final approval by the State of Connecticut DPH. Second. We have a motion to second discussion. I have a question. I was wondering whether these folks are the same. Uh, that has any impact to Mr. Spano's site. Are these the same vendors? Do they have an impact on Mr. Spano's site by any chance? I know this is about a price, uh, uh, dollars and cents, but because you're talking about sewage. Yeah, this is a water treatment. Oh, okay. I beg your pardon. Thank you. Uh, change order 21 is uh, basically on the spreadsheet. We are cleaning everything up uh, that we have for potential change orders. We're making this into a change order. So that's why if you look at the spreadsheet, you notice all the items that we took to add all these up. And same thing with the sheet that we uh, gave you. We're, on the spreadsheet is all these items and we're just putting them all together. There'll be another one that will front the whole uh, project up with change orders. Okay. Any other questions or comments on this? It, it was nice that someone had the forethought to change the locker room revisions to say it was ninety thousand dollars. That was that was good. That helps. Yeah. Anything else? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, aye. Motion carries. Uh, GUC WPCA twenty one dash zero six dash thirty. Consideration of an action authorized by utilities management to issue a purchase order to Harry H. Stone and Son Incorporated, 313 Main Street, or South Ferry, Connecticut, for about not to exceed $140,000 in assess the year two removal of a three year contract for transportation and disposal of liquid sewage sludge and scum at the wastewater treatment facility to be paid from fiscal year 2022 sewer operating budget. And furthermore, to city council be apprised of this action and the recommendation of the concur. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion? Um, this is an annual purchase order for the wastewater treatment plant. This is the sludge removal of the plant. Um, it's budgeted every year. This is the second year of a three year contract that was bid. We issued a purchase order to track the expense. Uh, and the budget amount is $140,000. Comments on this. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 A
right. So we don't have anything for lower, right? So we're going to move this to, to the next meeting. Right. I'm a, I'm a, I'll speak to it. Um, Bruce, correct me if I'm wrong. He, he gave me an update and asked me to speak unless you want to speak. Um, we, we're making all attempts to have the low lift pump station changes um, done during the month of August. In order to make, allow it to be done during the month of August, we're, we were trying to hotshot this to get it through so that it can make the um, the next committee of the whole meeting for city council, along with the following uh, city council meeting for approval. I'm advised that we may have this ready to go midweek next week. And there's a chance we may ask the chair to schedule a special meeting with, but it's not, it's not there yet. We would have to announce it at least 24 hours in advance. And oh, we're the information and we're going to check on the availability of the commission in order to do this. Because the commission, if we have all the information and the commission is available, physically available, then we can do a, uh, we can conduct a meeting and, and uh, you know, we'll properly notice everything else. Right. And the business is Thursday. Right. Thursday morning. Well, one of the thoughts. Right. Is, um, one of the thoughts was that it would be a very quick meeting just to go over that one item. Uh, and it could be a remote meeting, possibly, and it could be, in, you know, say at four o'clock or something. Well, at, at this point, I might consider a Zoom meeting to get it knocked out. Uh, I will tell you that going forward, though, I am looking to have in person meetings. All boards and commissions. Mayor and Council, committee of the holes, uh, utility commission meetings, whether Bob's are here, will get back, get us all back to the table. So, in, in depending on the mayor's schedule, it, it may make sense to, if the goal is to get it to the next committee of the whole to have it not the coming Monday, but the following Monday, right before the committee of the whole. Well, the committee of the whole is on the 28th. So, so we have some time. So the, the urgency is to try and get construction completed before the migration of the deal starts. Yeah, right? and that starts in September, right? Typically September. Late September, I believe. Right. In, in the next meeting, regular meeting cycle would be uh, say we kept the July meeting. We'd approve it here in July. It would go to the committee whole the very end of July and make an approval. Um, First week of final approval, first week of September, which would be too late. Yeah, sooner the better, I think. Right. Anything else? I won't run the voting on the second. So, all right. We have no executive session. I will take a motion to adjourn. Please go ahead. Uh, sure uh, before, 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 okay, before we, uh, yeah. anything else for the good of the order? Um, I should have mentioned this to do business. He last month gave us some report, it is a verbal report in regards to adjustments made to the financial state, our financial statement for the year end order. And then I asked for the uh, actual reports by department for the three departments. Uh, these are normal adjustments. I looked through them in detail. And I have to admit, uh, the auditor was doing their job, and this is what they're supposed to do at the end of the year. Uh, basically, we had a uptick in, in total revenue by the electric department of about eighty-three thousand uh, dollars. It represented probably five or six adjustments in general. Uh, the water department had a decline in income of about uh, three hundred forty thousand dollars, and that's again a small uptick for minor adjustments, but um, needed. And for the actual sewer department, we had. Decline in actual operations revenue of one million and one. And that's explainable also. Most of that was pension, for example. These are normal adjustments made during the course of an audit. Um, it's tweaking of the financials for us is to produce the annual report. I did get a copy from Ron. He gave you a hard copy. And uh, if you've got any stamina, 
<laughs> for reading this good luck. It's boring as hell, but it's very important. <laughs> if, if, if you want to know about the city's operation, financial, it's all inclusive right in this report. So uh, it's, a, it's a well done report. I, I thank the auditors. I thank Ron and everybody who created the information in the finance report. But these adjustments were all legit, in my opinion, and accurate uh, and needed. Uh, and it really just reflects on how well we run our book. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, Walker Hill Pump Station. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A little setback on that? Yes. Uh, yes. So, on. <laughs> There's always got to be a setback on everything. So, what happened was the pumps were being delivered to United uh, in Munich, and uh, it was on a FedEx truck. They had brake issues. The truck caught fire, and the motors. Um, Two of the pumps burnt up and uh, they ended up being totally lost. So now we're uh, went back to the company, Zion, and they're building two new pumps. It's about a 12 week uh, pushback. Okay. So, this, this picture that's included, is that? That's the pump prefab for Walker Hill? Yes. And they're going to be basically plug and play. It's going to come yeah. in in three three sections. Put them down and uh, put them all together. Okay. Thank you. Um, and, and if you ever have input with how much we write in the, the report and take pictures or how much we talk about in the meeting, please feel free. We can do more in the meeting or less in the meeting, but we do try to use the report to make some very interesting comments. That's just a quick, very cool story. I, I don't think you can give us enough information, so this is fine. Anything else? Okay, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank, thank you all. Thank you all. Have a very good week ahead.